A little while back, I did a video on a tool for transferring files to and from your computer and Android phone, and a lot of people in the comment section for that recommended another tool called KDE Connect. Now, this tool is far more than just a file transferring tool. In fact, right now, I'm actually controlling my cursor with my phone, and I can also do keyboard input as well from this device. Now, why is this a feature, you might ask? I have absolutely no idea but it is kind of cool. Now, sometimes you might notice that my cursor does disappear, especially after I press a key press. That has to do more with an application I'm actually running on this system. It's not actually a problem with KDE Connect, but this isn't really the only reason to run this application. If we go back to the main screen, as you're gonna notice, it has a bunch of other functionality and from the computer side, you can do stuff to the phone as well. So that first thing I showed you was under remote input, but another really cool thing you can do is run predefined commands on your computer from your phone. So the example I have here isn't really that great. All it's going to do is launch up an instance of Alacrity, but you could use this for something like, say you don't have a networked printer. Now my printer is a bit older, so I actually have to plug it into something to use it. So in that case, it's kind of difficult to print from my phone. So what I could do is have the printer plugged into my computer, transfer a file from my phone to my computer, and then have a button on the phone here that actually goes and prints the file. Now, there's probably plenty of other use cases you could think of for this, but that's just the first one I came up with. And if you want to add a new command, what you do is click on this little pencil icon down here and it opens up an interface on your desktop. Now, there is a list of sample commands you can use, but I presume that these are specific to the KDE desktop environment. I don't know how well they will work outside of that environment. So I would recommend just writing your own commands unless you are specifically in KDE. So I'm going to add one for my email client. So this will launch up Thunderbird. And if we go and press OK over here, as we're going to notice over on my phone, we now have a new button. So if I go and press that button over here, what it will do is launch up Thunderbird. And as we can see, that works as expected. And let's say you find something, I don't know, just some random bit of text that you want to copy and then send over to your computer. Well, that can be done by actually sending over your clipboard. So let's just copy this bit of text here. And then if we go to the send clipboard button here and press on that, as we can see, the clipboard is now sent. If I try to paste that, as we can see, we have that text I just tried to copy. Now, I don't believe there's a way to do that in the other direction, which is kind of annoying, but it's not really that big of a deal because it's still more convenient than having to message myself when I find something on my phone I want to copy. However, one thing that can be done in both directions is media player control. So if we bring open the KDE Connect app, this is the app you actually use to control stuff from the desktop side. So if we go over to the phone, as we can see, there's a couple of buttons in here. And if we go to the multimedia control, this will actually say I have no players available just because I don't actually have anything open on my phone. But let's bring up something like Spotify. And if we give that a second, as we can see, it's not perfect from the desktop side. It says for some reason I have 30 minutes of 33 minutes playing, which doesn't make any sense. And if I try to move the volume bar, it does this. And if I bring up the volume bar on my phone, as you're going to notice, it's actually doing that on the phone side. So changing the volume from the computer side is very, very annoying and I would not recommend doing it. However, if you want to do the same thing, but from the phone side, it actually works really, really well. So if we bring open the multimedia control, this is going to be for MPD right now. That's the only music player I have open. But if I have something like Chromium open, that'll work just fine. Now, I believe this works through Empress. So if you don't have something like MP Juris 2 running, you won't be able to control MPD. But if you do, as you can see, we get all the basic controls that we're going to need. You have a ability to skip through the song. So if we bring open uh, NCM PCPP, and then we try to move through the song. As we're going to see, it actually is mirroring those changes over on the desktop side here, which is actually really nice. And because it works through Pulse Audio, you can also change the volume levels of all your different devices very easily. So if I wanted to say raise up my main volume, I would just change this bar. And if we bring open my Pulse Audio control, we should see volume levels actually changing in here. So as we can see, changing that one changes that one, changing this one changes the bottom one, changing this one changes that one. So it works exactly as you expect to work, which is really, really nice to see. I would like to see it work nicely from the desktop side as well, but it's not that big of a deal. Now, as for file transfers, I've noticed that on my version of Android, they only seem to work in one direction. So I can 
can transfer files from my phone to my desktop, but not from my desktop to my phone. And this seems to be a fairly recurring problem. Every other update of Android, one of the directions breaks. Sadly, this is a bit of a problem, but as we will see, if I try to transfer this file here, we'll either get nothing happening on the phone or we'll get an error message saying that it basically failed to transfer. And as you can see, we basically got nothing here. So if we go and try to send a file from the phone, however, this will actually work just fine. So if we go to my downloads folder, uh, CD into that one, I guess. And if we go to 1202, we have this image right here. So that works exactly as we'd expect. I don't know why it breaks every so often. It could be a permissions issue that isn't being picked up by the application because when you want to do a file transfer, it will actually have a big list of permissions you actually do have to accept. And I've accepted all the permissions. So I don't know what exactly I can do to fix that. And on the desktop side, there's also a list of permissions as well. So if we go into the KDE Connect uh, settings application and then go to the phone that we're using as we can see this is basically a list of everything that can be done with the application so if there's some things that you don't want to support then you can just go and uncheck them but if we go down to the uh, I think it's share and receive receive and send files URLs or plain text easily I've got it enabled and it's got a directory that it can very easily save files to so that seems to be working just fine and on the phone side I've got the directory configured correctly so I don't exactly know what I can do to fix that. If someone happens to know then let me know down below. And one thing that's kind of neat but difficult to show is notification syncing. So if I get a notification on this phone here, it will actually be synced over to the desktop. If you do want to disable that functionality though, you can go into the plugin settings on the phone and then go down to notification sync. Now by default, notifications on the desktop aren't sent to the phone because that would be really weird and really annoying. But if you do want to do that, you can go and enable send notifications on the desktop side. Now, if you do want to use this, one thing to keep in mind is that if you don't have screen blanking turned off or you don't have the phone plugged in, when the phone screen turns off, it will probably disconnect from KDE Connect. Now, this is just a security feature built into Android to make it harder for people to steal your files, but it is a little bit annoying. So it's not a problem right now because I'm using screen copy, but with the screen being blank right now, if I didn't have it plugged in, it would have disconnected by now. So which kind of does make the find device functionality right here pretty useless. So what that's going to do is basically send a notification to your phone and play your ringtone. But if it's not plugged in, it won't be connected to KDE Connect. And if it's plugged in, you know where the phone is because it's plugged into your computer. So it's a cool feature. But because of the security features in Android, it doesn't work as well as it could. And also, before you try to run the KDE Connect app, make sure that you go and launch the daemon for the application. Now, the daemon isn't going to be in your path variable, which is kind of annoying. What you have to do is run slash usr slash lib slash KDE Connect D. I don't know why it's stored here and not where the rest of your executable applications are, but this is how it is. So either make a script to launch this or just add this specific path into your path variable because launching it like this is a little bit annoying every time. So if we run that and we go back over to this side here, as we can see, it is now connected again. Most of the things that can be done in the desktop app can also be done in the desktop CLI tool as well. So if we run KDE connect dash CLI dash H, as we can see, this is most of the same stuff. Now, some of it is missing. You can't do things like remote input, but the remote input on the desktop side doesn't actually work. And you can't do things like multimedia player control either. But I have noticed if you try to use player CTL, it actually will interact just fine with the phone. So I guess it is creating an Empress bridge to the phone. So your hardware media keys will actually be able to control your phone as well, which is actually kind of cool. And I reckon that might be easier than changing your volume level with that slider we saw before. But one thing you can do from here that you cannot do in the GUI app is this functionality right here. So dash dash photo. So what that's going to do is actually launch up your camera on your phone, let you take a picture, and then it will send it to the desktop. Now, I don't know when I would use this, but I think it is actually kind of cool. So if you do want to use that, you also have to pass in the ID for the device itself. So if we run KDE Connect dash CLI dash L, that will list out all of your connected devices. And in this case, we just have this one here. So if you want to use that option, what you have to do is KDE connect 
dash CLI dash D and then pass in the ID which is this one right here and then also pass in dash dash photo and then the path you want to save it to. Another tool that breaks fairly often is the SMS tool. So if you open up KD Connect dash SMS, this is going to try to synchronize all of the SMS messages from your phone. However, as you can see, it's not working. Now, I've let this run for 15, 20 minutes and it still doesn't work. So this is another one of those things where there might be some hidden permission issue that the application doesn't know about in whatever version of Android I'm running. Or it could be a problem on the desktop side, I, I don't know. Some people have luck with this, some people don't. It seems to really be up to what you're actually running. And the last thing I want to show is this slideshow remote thingy. Now, I don't know why this functionality is here. Actually, that's on the wrong screen. Let's put it on this one. I don't know if this is... Sh yeah, it is showing up fine for you. So basically, this is a thing where you can point to stuff with your phone. I, I don't know why, I don't know when you would ever use this because it blurs out your screen. If it doesn't blur out your screen, it blacks out your screen. So I, I don't know when you would ever actually use this. So basically you control it by actually moving around your phone. I don't know. And these two buttons to skip forward and backwards in a slide, I've tried in things like LibreOffice and they don't work. So this might be another one of those weird KDE desktop things, but at least on my system, it doesn't seem to work properly. So all of this does seem like a really interesting idea, and I imagine in the versions of Android where all of the functionality is actually working, this is a really cool tool. I actually would like to have the SMS tool. That'd be nice to be able to reply to SMS from my actual computer, but because it's not working, I can't really say it's a great feature, and because a lot of the other functionality isn't working either, I kind of have to say this, it seems cool, but in its current state on my phone, I can't really recommend it to anyone. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monster, Chico, Bento, Joseph, Peter, D, Rode, Tony, Brennan, Donald, John, Merrick, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there's some links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, Libra pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast tech over tea available basically anywhere and this channel is available on library odyssey bitube and bitshoot if you want to watch on a platform that isn't youtube so i think that's pretty much everything for me and i'm out <laughs>